Tonight on Free News. I'm at Tangiwai with more on the Laha and the first pictures from the Crater Lake where it all began. Counting the cost of the damage downstream, I'll show you the worst hit spots. Also tonight, disaster for the Kiwi biofueled superboat, its role in a fatal collision at sea. And the stress of defeat kills a World Cup cricket coach, how Pakistan's grief became a case of real mourning. This is 3 News. Kia ora, good evening. The star of yesterday's spectacular show has spent the day quietly resting, but even that was a sight in itself. Just after dawn, a break in the weather saw a 3 News helicopter reach the source of Ruapehu's Laha flow. You can see the spot where the crater wall has given way under the force of accumulating water in the lake. But the winds up there are still far too strong for the pilot to be able to land for a closer look. Well, almost as keen to go and take a look was the man who spent years trying to make sure that when the lake finally gave way, there was not a disaster. And it was to be a bitter sweet moment when he finally got to the summit this afternoon. The lower lake level in the crater has caused hydrothermal activity. It's caused four or five small volcanic eruptions since the Lahar yesterday morning. This is the place where it all began, the weakest point of Ruapehu's crater rim. All that's left of the Lahar today is a waterfall cascading from the volcano's crater lake. A lake that shared an astonishing 1.3 million cubic metres of water and volcanic ash as it burst through this 40 metre breach yesterday morning. The lake levels dropped by 6.3 metres. As we were filming these pictures, the experts were forced to climb for an hour to the crater lake because high winds made it too dangerous to land any closer. How would you describe the status of the lake at the moment? Well, it's, it's uh, flowing out quite strongly still. It's sort of a half cubic metre second, maybe one cubic metre second flowing out. Still, you know, still quite strong flow, much, much stronger than, than pre-eruption. And um, it's actually quite a good walk. You know, we had to, we had to find our way across. We couldn't, it used, used to be before eruption, you could just jump across it. It was only a few litres a second, so it was quite a, quite a strong flow. Uh, um, but the, the ice cliff at the end was, was how expected, you know, it was, the water dropped and all the ice blocks were on it. So um, the best thing was just this huge breach, a huge breach, and it's all, it's all gone. It's turned out there were two lahars, a small one breaching the crater rim at 11 yesterday morning. Then 15 minutes later, a much bigger lahar followed. The vibrations triggered warning sensors that a massive flow of water and debris was on its way down the mountain. It destroyed the Tefra Dam and created a deafening roar as the lake's watery ash and mud caught rocks and boulders on the way down. Today the lahar has gone, but it's left its mark. A deep scar has been gouged out of Ruapehu's landscape. The way this natural phenomenon has played out is a big relief for those who've been responsible for keeping people safe. For 12 years, Harry Keyes has lived with the knowledge a lahar would strike. He just never knew when. Does fantastic. it feel like some sort of yeah, relief? It's fantastic. It's such a relief. Such a relief. You yep. seem like a particularly happy man. Yes, it is. It's, it's really neat. Really neat. Yeah, and yep. obviously quite emotional too. Yes, Hilary. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's lovely. Shall we stop now? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Well, Dr Harry Keyes was very good-natured about it all, but he did admit off-camera that he has felt under immense pressure, especially with the legacy of the lives lost at Tangawai, and it's a legacy uh, that is carried very deeply around these parts. It happened more than 50 years ago, of course, uh, but people here still know the power of nature. Alistair Wilkinson reports. The memorial to the victims of the Tangiwai rail disaster survived the flash flood, but now stands in a sea of debris and mud. I mean, it's just like beach sand, but uh, it's got a bit of a smell here of the... It smells like sulphur. As the waves swept into Tangiwai, the toilet block built on a bend in the river was engulfed. The floodwaters took almost everything away. No sign of any toilets, no sign of any basins. Just one pipe, a few foundations, and a whole lot of mud. Council workers beginning the clean-up were philosophical. We've expected it to happen. It's actually really good that it has happened now, so we can get out, make sure everything's operative, and get on with our lives, basically. Downstream at Strawn's Bridge, farmer Hamish Blackburn was waiting for engineers to check his link with the outside world. He watched the deluge hit yesterday. 
Did you think the bridge would survive? Didn't for a while, yeah. We had our fingers crossed and hoping. Back at Tangiwai, the scene rekindled painful memories for those who remember the rail disaster of 1953 when a lahar took out the bridge, claiming 151 lives. And the Tangiwai disaster, people got here at midnight and it was pitch dark and there were people with just sort of their heads sticking out of this. And that's why no one here is complaining about the cost of protecting the community from the lahar, estimated at $10 million. Alistair Wilkinson, 3 News. And we can tell you that there is still no access tonight at Strawn's Bridge. They're hoping to have the engineers come on site tomorrow and hopefully have access restored then. But there was, was one other picture sequence that we wanted to bring you tonight. Uh, it's a cameo of yesterday's La Ha flow. It was taken by a camera installed by the Horizons Regional Council just upstream from the Tangiwai Bridge to monitor the La Ha's progress. It shows how suddenly the surge struck with the pictures covering a 15 minute period just after the crater burst yesterday. Hilary, there's been huge interest in the Laha. Can people come and look at the uh, Tangiwai Bridge yet? Well, they can certainly come and look at the Tangiwai Bridge, but from a distance. Of course, this is a rail bridge, and uh, I spoke to On Track about an hour ago, and they're very concerned about safety on the bridge. There's no concern about the, the bridge collapsing as such, uh, but with people trying to uh, access the bridge to take a look, uh, you know, trains go across there at 80 kilometres an hour, so that's a huge safety concern. They've had scores of vehicles who've tried to access the bridge, and even a busload of primary school children. So their advice is... Uh, certainly you know have a look and there are dozens of people around here at the moment having a look about the riverbed uh, taking a look at the memorial but don't go near the Tangiwai bridge. Hillary thank you.